for a treat, like I told you earlier, uh, because we do have with us our chief of products uh, in Zenzino here today, Dr. Colin Robertson. And what I really love about his teaching is not that he's just really good and in going into the science and giving us the benefits of it all, but he's really just teaching it, uh, teaching it in a very pedagogic way so that it's applicable uh, for us to teach and duplicate after. So that is really um, something that, and this is really something that I would like you to get ready for it, get your pen, uh, get ready to take lots of notes. And we are excited, uh, Colin, to hear your presentation about our incredible product, Sinogen, here today. The word is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for that less imposing introduction. Just so everyone knows, it's great to be here, first of all. But I presented this information early this morning, and Orion gave me such a big up that I could only possibly fail or fall under the bus from it. So, Hilda, I really appreciate just that nice, soft entry into this this afternoon. But it is a pleasure and a privilege to speak to you well, all. Well, we do have great expectations now, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. we did deliver amazing <laughs> earlier. Oh, it was yeah, brilliant. Top down, top down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this one might not be as good. I'm only joking. It'll be better because I've practiced it now. Um, it's a privilege to speak about this. And before I bring up the slides and we go through the presentation and the information that I'd like to share with you, which is all about Xenogene, I want to express a few personal comments about Xenogene. And first of all is that we don't talk about it enough. It is such a strong product. It's a key product. And I think on reflection, what happened with Xenogene is that we knew we were right ahead of the curve. We were right at the forefront. And when you take that step forward into the breach, in all honesty, it's, it comes with a little bit of, of kind of scariness, a little bit of fear because you're, you're, you're taking, you're breaking ranks, you're going out ahead. And I think because of that, we told people what it did, how it functioned, um, why we've done it, and then we kind of let it find its own way. And we need to stop that. And the reason why we need to stop that is because it is a phenomenal product. It's a powerful product. And we sh we're really proud of it. We're really, really proud of it. And what we need to do now, and I mean all of us when I say we, is we need to gain a brand new confidence in sharing its benefits to everybody we speak to. We need to start to make it a front and center product because it's unique, it's powerful, and it plays such a positive role in, in our overall health status. It really is. This is like real forefront of, of 21st century food supplementation. And what I love best, which anyone who's heard me speak before will know, what I'm a huge fan of is intelligent supplementation. And before we kick off, you know, Dr. Paul Clayton was at the heart of this. And actually the idea is that this idea came along way before I joined Zenzino and Orion and Dog were heavily involved in this at an early stage. And to a certain extent, not only did the research have to catch up and gain a certain amount of mass, but the food technology had to catch up so that we could do it effectively so that people didn't have to consume tablets that were this big. And so- Please. I'm going to take you through well, now. In brief... I can hear one of the translators. I'm going to take you through now some slides to keep me on track, really, and to entertain you with some nice photographs of food and all kinds of wonderful stuff. And then at the end, we should be able to take one or two, perhaps, questions. So let's delve into the marvelous world of Xenogene. After today, I will. my intention is you will either see this product in a brand new way and appreciate just how awesome it is. Or it's going to give you a real galvanized confidence when you're talking about it and fill any gaps that you might have in its purpose and what it can do. So here we have it, Xenogene. It is an incredible product. It's such a strong product. And what we're going to talk through are the set the scientific context. So why did we do this? So what, what, why did we put this together? Then we're going to look at explaining the ingredients. So what's inside? And then we're going to outline the recommended daily dosage. So we're going to look at the why, the what, and the how. 
they're the three areas that we're going to delve into when we consider the Xeno gene. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll feel better equipped to answer these kind of questions when they come your way. So let's have a look at what Xenogene does, first of all, before we start to look at the scientific justification as to why we did it. First of all, it supports a functioning cellular environment. Anybody who knows in Xeno knows that we are passionate about the cellular environment in optimizing it and making sure that it functions at an effective rate. Secondly, it normalizes the aging process. Now, I just want to put my personal statement on this forward, is that when it comes to anti-aging, what I believe in is that a lot of people around the world advance their aging. And so when we talk about anti-aging, really what we're talking about is realigning biological aging with chronological aging. So chronological aging is the day you were born, the year, and how much time has happened in between. Biological aging is really, well, how old is the stuff you're made of? Like, what state is that in? And often when we look at this and we look across populations, we see a big difference. We see a big difference between someone's biological age and their chronological age. Now, the ideal scenario is that you are like for like, is that however years, weeks, months that you've been on planet Earth for, your biological age represents that. The dream is that our chronological age is, let's say, 30 years, and our biological age is 25. Brilliant. So then that's maybe what people think of as anti-aging. But the reality is, for most people, it's that difference between chronological and biological because the biological is too advanced. They're 40, but biologically, they're 55, they're 65. And that's the more common case. And so when we normalize the aging process, we start to tap the brakes and we start to allow the, the chronological age to catch up with the biological age. And actually, because of the repair and restorative powers of Xenogene and the, the formulation, the key ingredients, then we can actually really start to narrow that gap. And I have every confidence and faith when you look at the science that for most people, you're going to be able to bring those two back together, genuinely speaking. But I'll come to how and why I think that a little bit later. But the fact is that the Xeno gene does normalize the aging process. It does powerfully and purposefully contribute towards repair and restoration, which your body's trying to do every single day. And here's a key bit, which is the out with the old and in with the new. And this triggered a lot of debate this morning, but the best way I can describe this, and this is how we used to describe it when this was a project. And I first heard this from Paul Clayton, and I'm convinced that he's the person who first came up with this, which was the notion that we have these zombie cells. We have cells that are spent, they're dead, they should be gone. And I want you to imagine any zombie program or film you've ever seen where the survivors are there and we've got this land of the dead around and you've got to escape or you've got to get rid of them. That's very much it. I've never really used this language prior to today because I thought it was a little bit too far, but actually it captures it perfectly. That is what we're looking at. We're looking at zombie cells. They're dead. They should be gone. They need to be moved on. And that's what Xenogene enables. Powerful stuff. And all of this affects all of us. So let's look a bit more at the scientific context of this. So apoptosis is the process of programmed cell death. Now, you will be amazed to know how much of your biology, your physiology is actually pre-programmed. There are certain hormonal, physiological oscillations, things that happen in your body that don't wait for stimulus. They don't wait to be told. It's the way your body is hardwired to make things happen. And apoptosis is a part of that. It's this notion of getting rid of cells. So we have this cellular turnover so that we get the new cells through and the old cells go. It's used during early development to eliminate any unwanted cells. But for adults, and this is the key target for, for the Xenogene um, product, apoptosis is used to rid the body of cells that have been damaged beyond repair. Now this happens negatively and it happens positively. So for instance, when we have lifestyle behaviors, when we consume poor quality foods, 
things that we might do that might negatively impair or impact on the cell. Well, apoptosis is there to try and push these things out the way. But there are positive things we do that bring about cell damage. Um, exercise increased physical activity you know these damaged cells and we have to get those out the way as well and we have to move them but also every cell has a, a lifespan and when it's when it's spent it needs to go and so apoptosis is the process by which the body is rejuvenating itself it's getting those new cells to flourish and it's pushing those old cells out the way so that they're gone they're spent the reason why we want to do this in the simplest terms and the terms that matter most to us, well, on the left there, we see the normal cell, perfect, intact, functioning. When it comes under stress, damage, when it ages, well, what happens? It becomes a senescent cell. And these senescent cells, they, they secrete um, inflammatory markers. They, they trigger an inflammatory response. So we really don't want these hanging around. They are contributing negatively to our cellular environment, to our physiological, our pathophysiological environment. So what we want is we want to push these senescent cells out to create space and allow those normal cells to thrive and to flourish. That's their environment. That's where they should be. Now, senescent cells themselves are dysfunctional. So they, they don't contribute. They don't, they don't contribute towards the bodily systems the things that we need to do on a daily basis they just fire away and more often than not they fire away negatively they accumulate at an accelerated rate now without getting in, in, into any kind of disease pathology this does underline a lot of certain types of conditions but the fact is is that once they start they start to build up pretty soon and so the process of getting them out the system is essential because then you start to get a backlog. And here's another reason why, because they utilize bodily resources, but they don't actually offer any support. So they're taken, they're taken from the system, but they're given nothing back. They're literally a drain on our biology and they degrade function. Sometimes you can see that degraded function because you'll look at someone who's 35, but they look 55. Remember the skin is an organ. It's the biggest organ that you have and it wears a lot of what you do. And so sometimes you can see this degraded function and sometimes the degraded function we can see is the one that we see first positively change. We can almost measure it that and you'll know that yourself with regards to people's reports and experiences just of balance oil, but certainly true here in this instance as well. So these senescent cells, we want shut. We want them out the way. The body has a system for this. And you've probably heard of stem cells. They got a lot of attention in the media and in the press and in the scientific literature and the medical literature. And for good reason, because they are a single cell that can either replicate itself or they can become different types of cells as a case of need may be. And you probably have heard of, even if you've only had a casual glance, of, of stem cell therapy, where a person's stem cells are taken from one place, introduced into another area that's been affected, and we see quite dramatic and profound outcomes. But the body is working to this 24 hours a day. And that, in fact, particularly when you go asleep, that's why sleep's essential. When you shut down over nighttime, remember 10 p.m., 2200 hours, the golden time to try and be into bed. Well, the body starts to trigger increasing yields of these in order to restore, replenish, repair the bodily systems and look at what needs fixing. They develop into many different types and they replace damaged and lost cells. So this is what your body wants to do. It wants to enable this stem cell response and it wants to get rid of these senescent cells. But there are compromises to this, which I'll come to. And they're related to our aging. So what happens is as we get older, we have genomic instability. We get increased amounts of sen cellular senescence. We have stem cell exhaustion. So like most of our systems really, depending on what we do and how, we how well we care for ourselves, how much effort we put into ourselves and in nurturing ourselves, but well, we start to put these systems under stress. And we also experience a lot of mitochondrial damage as we get older. And without getting too much into that, recognize that the mitochondria they're not just the energy centers of the things that we do and how dynamic we are in the day, but they're the energy centers of what the body processes are. 
So when we start to see those become less protected, start to get run down, we have stem cell exhaustion, we've got a buildup of cellular senescence, genomic instability. Actually, what happens as we age is we create more and more of an environment that allows these things to take over. And then so it's only a matter of time before part of the system start to work against us. And so what we need to do, we need to break that cycle. We need to get back to what I would class as more natural aging, because a big part of the problem is the things that people do that amplify the aging process and not do enough of the things to care for themselves to age accordingly and actually hit the brakes and slow things down a little bit. And so here's where we need to send in the Senolytics, the title of a great paper. I will share this slide deck with everybody. Have no fear, I'll make this available so that you can access it. But in your own time, I would encourage you to go and read this paper, even if you just read the key headlines. This was published in Nature, which is one of the highest impact scientific peer-reviewed journals in the world. Senolytic agents selectively induce apoptosis of senescent cells. There's no more debate in this. We know what they do. The, 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 the evidence, the research has reached a critical mass. We knew about this, certainly when I joined, people were talking about this in Zinzino years before I joined. The, the research, the data was already gathering and building and people were convinced what we needed was some of the technology to catch up. I'll explain that in a moment. But when we stepped forward, and we produced a food supplement, a powerful, positive food supplement, and released that to the market, we became disruptors. We attracted a lot of attention from people from all different types of markets and backgrounds because we broke rank. We stepped forward and we went, here, we're going to put this in your hand, and here you have the senolytic agents that are going to bring about this positive change. And we're still right at the front now. Nobody as of yet has replicated anything anywhere near as powerful as what we've produced. And so we do, all of us, all of us need to get a renewed confidence in this and we need to talk about it more. I'll come back to this again in a moment, but this product, Xenogene, is not just for older people. I'll come back to that in a minute. When we first released it, because of this information I've given you, this notion of 55 plus and accelerated rates of these processes happening. That's just simply not true anymore. What we used to class as conditions of old age are actually happening to people now in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and then into the 60s. So we need to change our thinking on that because actually there are more people who can benefit from this than we previously considered. And the evidence has shaped up to prove that and to support that kind of statement. So let's delve into our wonderful ingredients. And this was key, one of the key areas of technological development that we needed before we could actually put the product in place. So we'll start with the curcumin. Most people are familiar with this, as you can see in the photograph, typically derived from turmeric. And remember, Xenogene is a plus product. So it's all naturally derived. And what I'm showing to you here are the sources of ingredients that make up that formulation. So in this one, we've got hydrokirk, and hydrokirk is a patented trademarked version of this curcumin. And this was a game changer because this turned it from a fat soluble to a water soluble, which increased the bioavailability of the curcumin. This is really, really important. And right from this point, I want you to start to consider synergistic effect. Because as we go through this list of ingredients, what we've got here is something that is far more powerful than the sum of its parts. In this instance, two plus two equals 10. I promise you, and I'll go back to that towards the end. So we've got our source of this hydrocaric. A lot of people have been encouraged to take turmeric on a daily basis and to make various wonderful kind of remedies and potions with turmeric. And most people have found that really, really difficult to do. They start with the best of intentions, but like most things health related, find it hard to keep it sustainable. We've got it packed into this product right from the start. From our curcumin, we go to our piperine. And this comes, um, this is biopiperine, which again is a patented trademark version of it. High concentration of antioxidants derived from black pepper. And what people don't realize 
or often don't realize is that black pepper actually has a greater bioavailability of curcumin than turmeric. The clever part of this formulation, and all of this formulation is really clever, to be honest with you, it's a really intelligent formulation, is that this product already doesn't just sit alongside the curcumin. It's not that we've got more of this and we're moving forward with an added ingredient. This is where it starts to get really, really clever because the piperine actually enhances the bioavailability of the curcumin. So now what we're getting is we're getting more from the first ingredient as well as more from the second ingredient. Remember I told you two plus two equals 10, the synergistic effect, the compound effect, that's what Xenogene is all about. And we're only two in. Then we go into our quercetin. The extracts here from pagoda tree and onion. People often think that onion's a little bit kind of less exotic and exciting, but we don't really care. It was the best firm. It was the best version, the best form, the highest bioavailability, and it's a really good natural ingredient. Beneficial anti-inflammatory effects. And now we start to get into the protection component. So let's just pause for a minute. Go back through that scientific context that I laid out at the start, which is this notion of the development of senescent cells and the damage that the body sustains. So now what we've got already, and we're three ingredients in, we've got something that's going to start to powerfully and positively contribute towards stimulating a response that's going to move those senescent cells on. But by the third ingredient, we're already into protection protection against oxidative damage and stress. So again, we're looking at more combined synergistic effects. Then we add to that with a fisetin. It's a flavonoid, again, beneficial anti-inflammatory effects, further protecting our cells from oxidative damage, derived here from a smoke tree extract and a strawberry extract. And you might start to think perhaps, well, why have multiple types of, of a certain active agent. The reason being is that one, the synergistic effect, how they support each other and therefore enhance bioavailability of each other. But also consider this because, and I'm sure some of you heard me say this, I apologize for repeating myself, but I often describe most of what we do at Zenzino as just really, really good quality food, naturally derived, really good, intelligent quality food. And when you look at food or you look at a meal, let's say, you don't have one, God forbid, you don't have one thing. You don't just have the pasta and that's what you eat. A meal itself is comprised of, of multiple types of food, of ingredients that make it to the plate, that make it to the meal. And our digestive systems respond really well to that when they're working in harmony. So when there's a, a level of unison for, and, and um, conformity to the plate. And it certainly works here. It certainly works here. So by looking at multiple different aspects of a similar compound, we get increased uptake and absorption. Now we get really clever with the foicodons. And it's a nonstick compound um, derived from brown algae extract. And this is where we really start to play about with things now and really start to give the system some support. This helps to release those stem cells from the bone marrow and into the circulation of the body. Again, just go back a few moments ago, that stem cell response is key to your body's defense system and key to your body's process of renewing cellular activity out with the old and in with the new. And the fukudon starts to prompt and stimulate that. You can measure this visibly by smiling in the mirror because you get a reduction in teeth plaque. It's one of the key components and outcomes of it. That's why there are multiple angles that are interested in these types of compounds. And the dental area is really interested in it because of this key benefit. Zinc, readily available, as common an element as iron, but we need it. It's really, really important. It protects the cell again from oxidative stress but also support cell division and DNA synthesis. I've talked a lot in the past about epigenetics. I'm sure you've heard me talk about it. And epigenetics is all about your gene expression. So you inherit a certain amount of, of genetic um, fabric from your parents, from your grandparents. It comes down the evolutionary line through your family hierarchy. And that's important. 
But what's even more important is how they're expressed. What you do shapes your gene expression. The food choices you make each day, the hydration, the fluid choices you make, your physical activity, your exercise, the books you read, the, the news you listen to, the TV you watch, all of this are what we call epigenetic stimulants. And they start to shape your gene expression. You are the outcome of the choices you make on a daily basis. And no matter how disadvantaged your genetic inheritance is, you will only make things better by taking positive steps in the right direction. Certainly from a dietary point of view, 100%. You are what you eat. As, as you know, I like to tell people you are what you absorb, which is more accurate. So the minute you start to put something in that contributes positively, you start to change your gene expression. When you start to change your gene expression, you start to change and adapt and mold and shape exactly who and what you are and what it is you're about to become, particularly with regards to your health status. And so this zinc that is contained within supports that cell division and DNA synthesis. Vitamin C, the vitamin that everyone knows about, the vitamin that is really easy to access, the vitamin that we give you plenty of access to, and yet, when we do population sample surveys and we look at food deficiencies, always ranks high on the list of common vitamin deficiencies in the world, in the Western developed world. Why is that? I've no idea. Because whenever I ask anybody about vitamin C, they know all about it. You can get it from fruit, you can get it from vegetables. There's tons of supplementation and still people repeatedly are, are measured as being deficient. So no excuse if you're a part of the Zenzino family. Here, we take our vitamin C from the acerola berry, and it's a powerful antioxidant. People like to use the term superfoods. I'm not that keen on it myself, but I do understand what they mean. Because when we talk about foods like acerola berry, when we talk about things like blueberries, raspberries, what we get is gram for gram, pound for pound, greater bang for buck when it comes to certain types of vitamins and antioxidants. So compared to an apple or a banana or a pear, we get more from it. And so that's why it gets this kind of grand title. But these powerful antioxidants, the key part is they protect the cells again against oxidative stress. So it's protect and enhance, protect and move. That's what Xenogene does. It's out with the old, pushing those zombie cells out, get them through the system, no longer a drain taken from the system with no contribution, protecting those good cells and enabling them to flourish, to thrive. Let's hover a moment on the synergistic combination of active compounds. You, you can put whatever you want in a product. Um, you can to a certain extent, and there's plenty of people that do. It takes no intelligence. And people will often say to us, why didn't you put this in Extend? Or why didn't you put this in Xenoshine? And I say, we can put whatever you want in, but you've got to be happy to eat a pill that big every single day. Okay, we can put as much as you want in. You've got to be realistic. It's got to form itself. It's got to be able to something that someone can adopt as a behavior. And every ingredient that we put into a formulation has to earn its space. And we have to look at how that complements and works alongside the other things that we need to get into the formulation. The, the debate, the research, the, the labor that went on into the development of Xenogene was all about this, making sure we got the ratio, ratios right of those active compounds, making sure that we put together a blend of active compounds that we believed in, that we knew were going to be right at the forefront of this senescent science and that we're going to make a positive change within the system. That was why the leap was quite a scary one to take because we knew we were stepping forward with something that no one else had done, but everybody was lining up and trying to shape up to do. I'm not as anti-farmer as some of my colleagues are, but we know that the biggest industry that was upset with us was that model, because if you can make this prescribable and diagnosable and over the counter, boy, they can make way more money off these things. And what we did is we took the real, what I think ethical step forward, and we put all that investment and all that research and development into a product that can create as powerful an outcome, or well, more powerful an outcome, 
than anybody else has ever achieved in this area. And those components don't only complement each other, they enhance each other. So you really do get a compound synergistic effect. Those parts together are far more than when they're isolated. It's a powerful, powerful product. The benefits of Xenogene are simple. They eradicate degraded cells. They promote that cell division. So they, they support and enable the body to do what it is it's trying to do. They are a key catalyst in the transportation of cells, getting shut, getting them moved on. And they promote the production of new, fully functional cells. This is the key part. So it is out with the old and in with the new. So how do we take it? This gets asked a lot. And before I delve into this, I want to clarify something really that I'm putting forward on behalf of us all, which is when we released Xenogene, we were confident that this was a product that was going to be most measurably detected and the benefits of experienced by older people. Because at that point, as I've already said, you get these far more measurable changes in senescent activity. You get a downgrade of stem cell function. You get a downgrade of mitochondrial function. So at that point, it's more pronounced. But actually, having done and kept up with more of the research that's evolved in this area, looking at those changes across populations, the reality is when we start to look at the recommended daily dose, I would encourage anybody from age 30 to include this in their repertoire. This is something that you, can, you can't start really too soon to, to reap the benefits of because these, this term age-related it just, it just doesn't stack up anymore. Just last week, I was having a, a conference meeting with some cardiologists, and they were saying that the average age now, when we start to look at cardiovascular disease and heart attack, has now come down, and it's 47. 47! That's not an old person. We've got to stop this. Again, when you start to look at the epidemiology around other types of disease condition, everything's gravitated down. And the reality is, is when we look at what this product does from a pharmaco-nutritional like, perspective, when we look at how it positively contributes to our daily nutrition, we don't need to wait until the start of a problem is shaping up. We can start to engage now and start to enable and support those functions right from the start. So the recommended daily dose is one tablet per day. And then a spring clean regime which is four tablets per day for two weeks. Somebody asked me this morning, how often should you spring clean? And I would say minimum twice a year. But myself now, rapidly moving towards the age of 50 in September, I'm going to start to treat this as a seasonal process. And I'm going to start to spring clean every four times a year. Every season is when I'm going to hit up a spring clean. And also rather than just spring clean and then wait for the next spring clean. It's spring clean. I'd say the best practice on this is spring clean back into daily dose, just keeping that over. When we do spring clean, there's a measurable benefit. And what happens is we spike the compounds in the pl blood plasma. And so what happens here is we get this massive upregulation. We get this bigger response. We get an accelerated response of activity around that process, which is great. And then when we back down to our daily dose, we've got a heightened sensitivity to the amount that we're taking on. So we get a real, again, compound effect by not just spring cleaning or daily dosing, but actually marrying the two. Final bit of advice I give, because we get asked it a lot, whether or not you should take it with or without food, whichever is most convenient for you, for your customer, take it. I would often encourage that you take it with food because it is food. It's good quality 21st century food. And taking it with food can often avoid some of the things that people experience, you know, a little bit kind of, they'll find it more difficult uh, finding a time to isolate it between a meal or whatever it is. Taking it with food, you're not going to compromise any of the absorption. You're going to get a great uptake of that and you can hit a routine. So you take it with your breakfast, you take it with your lunch, you can make it constant, make it most effective. And that's everything that I've got to say about Xenogene in this one. So I'm gonna close down my slide deck and hand back. Thank you for listening. Hopefully there was some new information in there and give you some more confidence in the context.
Thank you so much, Colin. We are getting an applaud here. So I hope you feel the love. This was absolutely exceptional. Okay. Um, uh, I've gotten questions already about can we get the presentation? Yes, you uh, said that you would uh, you would um, distribute that out. So we will ensure that our directors will get it. Uh, but also I got questions about can we cut this out from the directors <laughs> so we can actually distribute it out into our team? And we will absolutely make sure to do that as well. And I think that this is really going to be a great a teaching for everyone to see and hopefully also another extra extra boost to really rock the campaign now <laughs> towards uh wednesday so thank you so much and i i really I, I said to the leader council as well you know i'm i'm so excited about this product and getting more and more excited about it um as time goes when we launched it first you know a year ago we were a little careful recommending you know a strong dosage but with the uh, with all of the results that is coming in and the experiences that we've had over this past year, it's really just an amazing product. Mm. And um, I'm actually quite emotional thinking about all of the testimonials that I've gotten um, just during the past months uh, from people that has been using Synogen. So uh, thank you, Colin. Uh, I'm sure that you're going to stay with us for a while and just answer any possible questions that might show up in the chat. Will do. Awesome. Thank you. Now